Hi everyone, welcome to Gypsy Hill. So today I'm in South London. I've come over to talk to the team here. They've been really great with us recently. So we've started distributing a brand of yeast from Italy called AEB. And the guys here have basically carried out a full analysis, white paper, case study of various strains of the AEB yeast. And we came here today to hear the positive feedback from them. The reason we chose to work with Gypsy Hill, they're friends of ours, first and foremost. Um, they're independent, they're employee owned, they're just a great bunch of people. And we knew that when we came here, given their skill, given their setup, given their expertise, they would be great to partner with and even better to receive data and white paper information that we can share with the brewing community. So we're really, really grateful for the detail they've went into and we're gonna share that with you in video and in the blog with some of the beers here that have been brewed using these yeasts. And we're gonna to continue to work with the team here. They've done such a great job so far. And we're gonna keep sharing that information, keep sharing that data with you so you can have confidence in this great brand of yeast. Right, let's get a couple of the team in and have a chat to them about their experience with AUB yeast. Today I'm joined by Jim and Max. So Jim is head brewer here at Gypsy Hill and Max is in quality assurance. Uh, these guys have kindly um, been trialing some AEB yeast for, for us for a few months now. So some of the beers that, that have been released commercially are um, as a result of that trial period. So they've developed a really nice white paper and case study on the yeast. So I guess all I want to do is ask you, how has that went? Um, really good, really happy with all, all four beers that we've uh, currently released. Still got a couple of stuff in tank as well that we're sort of doing some more trials on and, and looking at uh, development flavour. But um, in terms of actual the beers they've made, and yeah, really happy all around, uh, really. Um. You were telling me earlier you go through a sensory uh, panel with all the staff here. Can you just explain to me very briefly before, like we'll put some of the imagery up on screen that you've, you've developed, but how does that process work? So uh, we'll get a sample uh, either from the fermenter, the BBT, the can or keg. Um, we'll put that out and allow people to taste it. Um, and then they will give a score that's uh, on a hedonic scale. So um, roughly how much do you like this? Um, we'll then collate those scores, uh, generate a, an average and, a, and a, an overall um, deviation of how people have scored it and pick out some of the most, the highlights of what people have tasted and uh, what flavors most people have picked up. Some of the parameters that you're monitoring whenever you're doing the study for us here is pH, temperature, gravity. How is that? Is that manually checked by yourself daily or what way does that work? So yeah, we'll do it daily. Um, and sometimes if it's the first day of fermentation, we'll take another sample later on in the day. Um, that'll be a, a sample that's taken. It's then brought up to the lab to me and I'll filter it. Um, and then we'll check the pH and the gravity. Uh, with a filtered sample. Jim, you've used uh, the Hordinal Quebec strain in two of the beers, so did you ferment them at high temperature or what was the thought process with them? Um, so with the, so the first one we did was the New England IPA, which was a uh, sort of pina colada inspired IPA. Um, so that's why we went with the Hondel to, particularly for the sort of pineapple notes in there to try and emphasize that. Yeah. Um, that one wasn't fermented quite as warm when we when we've used uh, Kvokes on hoppier beers, we try not to go too hot, particularly for when we're doing the dry hop. Um, so we're not gonna be extracting too many unwanted flavors. But then with the blowout, the Imperial Stout, that um, I believe we took that up to about 35, 36 degrees. So proper top end that, uh, that and that was a very rapid, quick fermentation, but no off flavors, no high alcohols at all. Um, it's yeah, it's still still wrapping my head around a lot of the fake stuff. It's it's it doesn't make sense, but it makes some bloody good beer. So yeah. <laughs> and the uh, other yeast that you tried was the AY4, um, which is basically just a clean eel yeast. And yeah. would you say it delivered on expectations? Oh, definitely. Yeah, the being nice. I think that that became a staff favourite for everyone. Just a really nice, clean, crisp kind of a slight east coast vibe to it but much more leans towards the west coast but without being too heavily uh bittered yeah. um on the bittering um so yeah just it, yeah it became became a staff favorite very quickly because it was just a, a really good nice session well four and a half percent quite sessionable sort of beer and yeah just it was yeah it became our friday night beer 
quite quickly sort of thing, especially when we had it on draft as well. The, um, the last yeast that you're, you're still sort of experimenting with it, but it's the Fermo Brew Citrus mm -hmm. for the low and no alcohol. Yeah. Um, work's still ongoing with it, but how have you found it so far? Good. Um, it definitely, particularly with the low and no stuff, as we were sort of saying before, um, just having that sub subdued ester formation during fermentation, I think having that little bit of extra aroma coming through with the little fermentation that is happening, yeah. it definitely gives it more more depth to the beer uh, and yeah um no yeah it's, it's it's yeah as i say still trialing so still learning still still finding stuff out but um yeah and the other beer that is released with it is the taffa taffa but that is a sour beer so it's citrusy already sort of thing but yeah. it's just again to emphasize that that sort of citrus notes yeah i'm genuinely appreciative of the guy's time today so i'm conscious i don't want to take them away much longer there is a, a very detailed white paper being prepared in house here it's almost there in fact it's probably the most impressive feedback we've had yet so it's a credit to you and thank you for that um, we're going to continue to do some work with gypsy hill here on the abe strain so they're going to be working with us and trialing the different strains and giving us their feedback so um, we're excited to see what you think about the beers um, please do check out their beer and it's available online and from all good independent local retailers. Like if you guys are watching this and you're a commercial brewer in the UK and Ireland and you're interested in getting your hands on some of the AEB yeast, please reach out to me and I'll direct you to one of our sales team who'll call out and give you full technical support and great service. The data that the guys have captured here, we'll pop that up in a white paper on the Get A Brewed blog and we'll pop a link below in the comments section. Um, we're excited to hear what you think about the beers and thanks gents for your time and for your efforts. Wow, <laughs> there was a lot of detail in the data that the team have captured here at Gypsy Hill. The really good thing for me is that it's carried out in a sensory panel, sometimes 10 people, sometimes 13, sometimes the whole team are on that panel. We were seeing some really impressive scores, some hitting nines. The guys are telling me to hit a nine, it's, it's an incredible beer. So the yeast so far has been having such a positive response to the team here. Not only are they happy with the quality of the yeast, with the technical support, but the price is bang on point. We have this in stock in large quantities in our warehouse and we're able to get it to you express. We're also able to give you full technical support from the team at AUB. So look, we, we are really blown away about the effort and detail that the team here have put into it. So um, credit to Fred and Max and Jim and all the team here that have really invested in the data that they've shared with us. So like Deborah and I sat down, went through the sensory information, went through all the fermentation graphs where we were monitoring temperature, pH, gravity, um, even sensory with a large panel and then doing all of the tests in the lab here as well. Look, a credit to the team here, really impressed with the feedback they've given and it's been such a positive vibe for us to see them so warmly receiving this as a quality product and we're hoping that we'll continue to share more and more data with you and more and more info to give you confidence in this brand of yeast.